watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. I'm, I'm pretty confident, me and my team, and I think we can go out there and get the job done. Put a statement about who's number one, who's number two. It's going to be a lot better. We're going to have a lot more people in the crowd. It'll be a lot louder. If everybody's having energy and we're all playing our best, then we can make a run for state. You know, whatever it takes to win a game, our kids are on board with doing. We need to match their energy level and effort, um, and I think I think our guys are ready for that. Ready or not, Coach Boer, the playoffs have indeed arrived. From here through Thanksgiving, it is win or go home time on the highlight zone. And sure, 6A and 5A do get a bye this week, but what a way to get things rolling. We've got a stack sectional in 4A, no doubt about it. It's where we find Josh A. And with your highlight zone game of the week, Josh. All right, Glenn, East Noble and New Haven, very familiar foes. But just how familiar? Well, they played just two weeks ago with the Knights handing the Bulldogs their only loss of the season. But that game was in Kendallville and without Ohio State recruit Mylon Graham. Let's run it back. East Noble New Haven for your highlight zone game of the week. Graham, of course, back from injury for the Bulldogs. Would it matter against a bruising bunch from K-Town? Knights did win this matchup 31 to 21 week eight. Just like two weeks ago this night, belonging to the Knights. First drop for East Noble, it's a razzle dazzle. Xander Brazel to Landon Swagger. He toes the line for that touchdown to make it a 7-0 lead for the Knights. That would be her score until just before halftime when Dylan Crail crosses the goal line right here and a two-point conversion from Crail making a 15-0 East Noble lead and the Knights would not let their foot off the gas pedal coming out of halftime. First drive of the third quarter. That's Crail this time from 19 yards out. 22-0 East Noble in full control on the road to open up sectional play. New Haven at home looking for any sort of answer deep in East Noble territory. But Donovan Williams gets bottled up from behind by Connor Lyons. That's a turnover on downs. A little bit later, East Noble would deal the proverbial nail in the coffin as you're going to see Michael Mosley punch this in through the goal line. It's all East Noble. Second time in three weeks, this time 43 to nothing. Shutting out the number six team in class 4A. Last year we caught a lot of bad breaks. Uh, the ball just didn't seem to roll our way, but you know, in, that, in this case, the ball tipped our way. Uh, so it just it feels good. You know, sometimes when the football gods are on your side, it's a it's a good feeling. Our blocking, our blocking did amazing tonight. That O line played awesome. Gave our running backs great holes. Xander threw the ball amazing. I think just we just played good our, our football. People thought our win last night or last time wasn't legit with, you know, Milan being out and, and them coming back a little bit at the end. And we, we felt like we were the more physical team and, you know, we went out and showed it tonight. New Haven ends their season with an 8-2 and two record. Meanwhile, East Noble advances to the sectional semifinals next Friday. Glenn, take it away. All right, as for who East Noble will play next Friday night, the winner of this one, Leo and Southside. First drive of the game. Check this out. A whole pride alliance in the backfield. It's the big guy Brock shot credited with the sack and well the Lions force a three and out on the first drive of the ball game Leo ball and it's Caden Hurst doing what he does. He gets in the end zone for nine yards out Hurst had three total touchdowns on the game. It was seven zip Leo at that point still in the first you're going to see Darius Carter up the gut here from 30 yards out. He's in Leo wins this one 42 to nothing. So we got East Noble at Leo next Friday for a sectional semifinal. Other half of that sectional bracket, Wayne and Dwenger. These two did not meet during the regular season thanks to the new SAC format. Second quarter, it's already 7-zip Wayne. The Generals add to it. 28-yard field goal makes it 10-zip Wayne, but Dwenger answering Ethan Springer. Looking, he takes off from seven yards out, slides into the end zone, and it's a 10-7 ball game. End of the first half. Clock winding down. Springer heaving this one. 36 yards to the end zone. Six foot eight senior Caleb Lehrman is there. Touchdown with zeros on the clock. Gave the Saints some momentum and the lead heading into the half. And Dwenger goes on to win 21 to 10. Last stop in 4A, sectional 19. The Calb at Angola. The Barons beat the Hornets by two scores back in week one. Special teams looking pretty special early, at least if you're an Angola Hornet. 
It's a blocked punt returned for a touchdown by Dallas Davidson, and it's Angola up seven zip. Later, though, Seth Wilcox, the coach of the Cal Barons, loves this guy, the young speedster, Xavier Bell, and the bell rings true. He's into the end zone, and that knots it at seven all. Later, you're going to see more from the DeKalb offense. This time, it's Caden Hinkle out of the Wildcat. Hinkle is in. DeKalb beats Angola in a good one, 28-21. So, Dwenger will play at DeKalb next week. For a sectional 20, Columbia City won a sectional title last fall. If the Eagles wanted to do it again, they'd have to get by Huntington North in round one this year. Grayson Bradbury trying to make it happen. The quarterback bullying his way in the end zone and Columbia City on the board first up 7-0. Huntington North looking to fire back here. Ian Wiley to Tatum Brooks. That's a nice pitch and catch right there, but Columbia City would eventually pull away this one. Columbia City wins 27 to 7. They will host Mississippi next week. Will the Eagles. Last stop in for a sectional 18, 1 and 8 Wawasee hosting 8 and 1 South Bend Riley. And this is Wawasee with a little trickeration. The reverse here, Hunter Tinky goes 48 yards and the fighting Readaboos are victorious in this one. Wawasee takes down South Bend Riley, the final 35-26 Warriors victorious. Let's move on to 3A now. Sectional 27 is where we'll start. Heritage at Woodland. Patriots, one of the favorites, no doubt, in this sectional after going 8-1 in the regular season. And Toby Meyer, a big reason why they did the quarterback with the early touchdown to make it 7-zip fighting Coltmans. Second quarter action, Meyer slinging it out to Zeke Litchfield. And dude was a matchup problem all regular season in the ACAC. Litchfield is in to make it 21-0. Later, how about some defense? Ty Loudon's pass here. Battered up and intercepted by Braden Walter. And Walter, watch this dude weave his way all the way to the end zone. 58 yards on the pick six. And Heritage, no problem at Epsler Field tonight. 35 nothing Pats win. Who will Heritage get in the sectional semifinals next week? The winner of this one, Belmont at Garrett. And Garrett, they've gone to the air quite a bit this season. They've got a down pat at this point. Calder Hefty. To Parker Skelly, that's 27 yards, and that's a that's a first down, I should say. Later, you're going to see some more passing from the Garrett Railroaders. It's Cam Rubel picking up a first as well. And later, Braden Nussbaum would punch this one in. Touchdown for the Railroaders, and Garrett rolls in this one, 35 to 7 over Belmont. Other half of the sectional 27 bracket. We got Norwell hosting Delta. The night's starting to heat up, at least perhaps we thought so. They beat Columbia City last Friday, but they were down 33 zip before they get on the board. However, this is a thing of beauty. You saw Caden Castle hit Cohen Bailey, and Bailey does the rest. A 67 yard touchdown, but again, it's 33 to 7 at that point. Norwell trailing. Later in the second, Delta's Bronson Edwards hits Chase Ritchie. Ritchie in for six, and Norwell's season. Ends at the hand of the Delta Eagles, 47 to 7, the final in Ossian. Last game in sectional 27, Yorktown at Concordia. Now the cadets still looking for their first win of the season. Now would be a good time to get it. This does not help. Aiden Ewing in the first quarter. The Yorktown back breaking it off 80 yards for the score. And at Zoller Stadium, the Tigers led six zip. But there would be life for the cadets after that in the second quarter. It's the Cadets defense, Zach Spielman, picking off Mason Moulton. He would take it to the house. The Cadets led this 8-6, but a big fourth quarter by the Yorktown Tigers is the difference in this one as Concordia falls 31-14. 3A sectional 26, West Noble undefeated in the regular season. The Chargers hosting perennial powerhouse Mishawaka Marion. First quarter, it's Mishawaka Marion, the Knights doing it on offense. Bryce Lassane is scrambling in for the touchdown. And it's a seven zip lead for Mishawaka Marion. West Noble, the pride of Ligonier, not about to go down without a fight. Drew Yates to the big guy, Braden Barth. He would be down inside the five. Later on the drive, you're going to see Drew Yates with a QB keeper, and he hits Pater. Now, this one would come down to the final seconds. Check this out. Nefty Silva, the West Noble kicker, a 33-yard field goal with four seconds left to break a 43-all tie, and that is your game winner. Thanks to Tom Skimmerhorn for that video. 
Chargers win it on that field goal with four seconds to go, 46-43. So who will they get next Friday with Wes Snowball? Winner of this one, Lakeland and Knox. Lakers 6-3 in the regular season, but Knox is pretty good. However, first play, it's Lakeland. Kean Arroyo all the way to the house in Lakeland. Just like that, takes a six-zip lead. They were feeling good in the swamp. However, direct snap here from Knox. This is a good football team. The Redskins, Myo McLaughlin getting into the end zone here. He takes it to the house to even things up. And this game, well, it was a tough one for Lakeland. Their season ends 46-19 at the hands of Knox. Other half of the sectional 26 bracket, Fairfield hosting Jimtown. Fairfield lining up for a fake punt. Uh, unfortunately, Jimtown's Jackson Clopton, not a big fan of trick plays. He picks off the pass, and the Jimmies have the ball in fairly decent field position. You're going to see Mason Armstrong sweep it to Colin Chrisman there. Nice gain, but it is Fairfield that comes out victorious 17-6. First time ever that Fairfield has beaten Jimtown in a playoff game. Last stop in 3A, we're talking sectional 28. Tippy Valley ranked third in the state. The Vikings on the road at number one, Bishop Chittard. And after a Chittard touchdown, you see Tippy Valley fumble the ensuing kickoff. That is not good because Chittard would take advantage of it. Watch Colin Guy go up here for the touchdown grab. Whew. And Tippecanoe Valley season ends at the hands of top ranked Chittard on the road, 40 to seven Trojans over Vikings. Well, that's going to do it for 3A and for 4A, but there are plenty of other big time matches in the smaller classes. That is true in 1A, where we're going to buzz our way down to the landing strip as Adams Central hosting rival South Adams as the Jets look to make their third straight trip to Lucas Oil Stadium. In 2A, Bishop Lewis has 11 state titles in the trophy case. Would the Knights get a step closer to number 12 after a trip to Busco? It was closer than you might think. Plus, Bluffton, the eighth-ranked team in the 2A state poll, hits the road to face sixth-ranked Alexandria. All that, plus trips to Eastside, to Central Noble, to Southwood and Northfield. It's all coming your way next in the zone. We are the Adam Central Jets, and stay tuned for more sectional highlight zone. You know, many years at Bishop Lures, the regular season just seems to go out the window when the playoffs start. Often, the gauntlet of the SAC is just pretty much used to get the Knights prepared for a long playoff run, it would seem. But this fall, the regular season providing plenty of promise as Lures earning a share of the SAC's victory bell for the second time in three years. That does not seem to bode well for other 2A teams across the state. No, you wouldn't think so. Lures opening 2A sectional 35 play at Cherubusco. You can't do it better than this. We're talking opening kickoff and Gio Jimenez. They call him Shifty and he is indeed that. Number three, taking it back for six and Lures on the board, like the split up 6-0. But man, Busco made this a ball game in Turtle Town. Even though they didn't have the regular season they would have liked, they put a scare in the Lures. Angelo Iannacilli, he's had a great season. He gets the touchdown run right there. Busco, however, would eventually fall to Lures. The final on this one, 41 to 30. So who will Lures face next week? Would it be Wabash or Eastside? The Blazers coming off their fifth straight NECC small division title in the regular season. Pick this one up in the second quarter. Isaac Wright to Trevor Daughtry. That's a touchdown, and Wabash is on the board, but down 28-7. to Eastside's defense making sure that touchdown pass wouldn't happen again. This is E.J. Miller. We've seen him a couple times this season. Make some plays for the guys in green. He would do it again. A pick six for E.J. Miller, and Eastside moves on to win 48-7. to They're going to face Lures at Lures next week. Will the Blazers? Other side of the sectional 35 bracket, Central Noble and Prairie Heights. The Cougars beat the Panthers 52 zip back in week four. This was a mud bowl up there in Albion. Third quarter action, Matthew Roberts with the interception right there for Prairie Heights. Man, you can see it's muddy right there in the middle of the field. Better break out the tide sticks after this one. You'll see Central Noble's Sam Hoover recumble, recover a fumble here. And Central Noble goes on to win a low score 14 zip as the Cougars move on. 
2A sectional 36 big matchup for Bluffton. The eighth ranked Tigers facing number six Alexandria on the road first quarter. Bluffton down, but not for long. Braxton Betancourt to A.J. Streveler. That's a 23-yard touchdown. Bluffton up 12-7. And then in the second quarter, it's Tucker Jenkins with the touchdown as Bluffton tested. They passed the test on the road. They'll be at home next week. 26-14, Tigers win. Moving on to 1A football, a rivalry renewed in sectional 44. South Adams at Adams Central. Jets beat the Starfires 48 zip in the regular season. This showing much better for South Adams. Opening drive that was Colton Bolenbacher with the touchdown. And yeah, South Adams led this six zip. But AC puts their foot on the gas after that. Keegan Bloom with a short touchdown run. And AC now leads 7-6. More from Adams Central. So many weapons on this offensive front. It is Aaron Hershey this time with the touchdown run and Adam Central eventually runs away with this one 42 to 6 in Monroe. So who will the Jets get in round two? They'll get the winner of this one. Fremont at Southwood opening kickoff and can't score any faster than this. Cohen Holiday 97 yards for Dave Snyder and the Southwood Knights. You kidding me? It's Southwood. Just seconds into this game, up 7-zip, and Southwood feeling their oats. Now you're going to see some defense coming up here. It's Carmine Moreno for Fremont. He gets the pick, but it was Southwood's night as the Knights move on 38-14 as they win over Fremont. Final stop, we got Northfield hosting Madison Grant. The Norse beat the Argyles by a touchdown last year in the sectional semifinals. This would be a little bit different, though. Second quarter, 22-zip, Madison Grant, Maverick Griffin. In for the touchdown, it's from 34 yards out, and Madison Grant now up 30 to nil. More from the Argyles, O.J. Blackwell, and the juice gets loose. Blackwell, 30 yards on the touchdown run. Madison Grant over Northfield, 50 to nothing. Stay tuned, your gem of the night is coming up here on the Highlight Zone. Apropos to hear from Leo right there, because last Friday night, Brock shot was shot out of a cannon. The Leo Jr. in DeKalb's backfield pretty much immediately after the snap, crashing the party in Waterloo and earning the Highlight Zone's highest honor. So, who's going to take it home? Week one of the playoffs. Here is your gem of the night, brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers and that's Bishop Dwanger, and I, I, we'll call it a Hail Mary. Why not? We pick it up at the end of the first half. No time on the clock when Ethan Springer Heaves it to six foot eight senior Caleb Lehrman in the back of the end zone for a touchdown that completely changed the complexion of this game as Dwenger took the lead into the half, went on to win 21 to 10 over the Wayne Generals. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers, Gem of the Night Springer to Lehrman. As for next Friday, after a bye week 6A and 5A, get to it. 6A, Carroll is at Warsaw, Homestead hosting Fishers, while Northrop hosts Hamilton Southeastern in 5A. Northside has another by the legends. Get the winner, Anderson and Snyder. Of course, we're going to have all the best 4A through 1A matchups as well. It's a jam-packed week 11 sectional semifinals next Friday on the Highlight Zone. And finally, how about some hockey, right? Comets opening season number 72 on the road at the Indy Fuel first period. Morgan Adams Moisan, he was named the Comets team captain earlier today, and he gets the first goal of the season. That's pretty impressive. Big day for him, makes it one zip Comets in the first. Later, Matt Wedman, he's the alternate captain this year. Apparently, the guys they picked to lead this team know how to score two zip Comets. Kays win this one 4-1. These two teams are going to play again tomorrow in the jungle. Comets home opener 7-30 right here in the Summit City. But for Josh, I'm Glenn. That'll do it for this week's Highlight Zone, and we'll see you next Friday night.